From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tie Cats Today for this Wednesday, July the 26th, 2023. On today's episode, Coach O speaks about continuing to prep for the Ottawa Red Blacks and that big trade that went down yesterday. Sean Thomas Erlington speaks about rehabbing his injury and a potential return. And I speak to Marcellus Bowman, the strength and conditioning coach for the Tie Cats, to get a better picture of what the team is doing to maintain physical condition throughout the season. But first, let's get to a bomb that dropped yesterday as the Hamilton Tie Cats announced Jagera Davis has been traded to the Calgary Stampeders in exchange for a sixth round pick. Jagarad returned to Hamilton this season after spending last year with Toronto. However, things just didn't quite work out and this time he will go back to Calgary for the remainder of the season. Jagarad has made the Grey Cup every single season since he's been in the league. So he has that winning pedigree that teams are looking for and he will look to bring that out with him to Calgary, a team he played for from 2016 to 2018. I spoke to Coach O about the move and more. And Sean Thomas Erlington, he's made his return to practice this week. Just how's it been having him back out there on the field? Yeah, it's like almost like comfort food. Like he just kind of knows where to be. He's got a calmness about himself. He's been here. He understands the atmosphere and the culture. It's not like he's been absent. It's just he hasn't been out there with his teammates for a little while. So, yeah, it's always, it's always great to have him there. He's so consistent as a person and as a player. Uh, it'll be nice to have him back, back with us. Yeah, and, and adding him now to that offense whenever he does make his return, just how much does he bring to the team on the offense? Well, like I said, it's we'll see. It's not like we don't go, like I've been saying all week, we don't go from you know walking to sprinting. Uh, we'll see what the game unfolds and, and the plan that we have. I can just tell you that he's going to play, and so we'll see. I can tell you the history. Everybody knows the history and the resume, but it's really about what we can do and get done moving forward. Yeah, you have to ask them, you know. Um, you, you make tough decisions all the time. And I think um, Jer Garrett is a guy who not only produced on the field for us, um, he's a guy that has an infectious personality. And so decisions like this, you know, they're not easy. So um, you can't, for me to sit here and tell you exactly what it's going to do, I, you know, you can't predict that. I can just tell you that he was a more than well-liked guy, um, somebody who you know, chose to come back this way, and this is just a decision we made, and we're, we're moving forward. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, it's an Eastern Division opponent. They they have, uh, you know, they have three wins. They found a way to get it done, so credit them. Like, they, you know, they're starting to get some traction over there. They've, you know, had an uphill climb, and that's just from a distance. Again, you know, Rick, I don't comment on other people's ball clubs. Uh, I can just tell you from the outside in that they have three wins. It looks like they're well-earned. Uh, they'll they're going to be ready to go to get their fourth win. And they're going to be at home. They've got that home streak behind them. Everything seems to be moving forward. Uh, with that being said, all focus on Hamilton, what we got to do to get better and find a way to win uh, this week. That was Coach O, and he spoke about Sean Thomas Erlington's return to the roster. I wanted to talk to Early about his journey so far this season, recovering from an injury that he suffered very very early in training camp and later on I'll get into more detail with strength and conditioning coach Marcellus Bowman about the process of getting guys back to health when they're injured. Sean spoke to me about going through the recovery process and getting back on the field with his teammates. Right Sean how does it feel to be back here out practicing with the rest of the team this last week? It definitely feels amazing. It's been a long time coming. Uh, I've been working hard to obviously uh, get back from this, this injury and now it's time to uh, time to go to work. What was the recovery process like for you? Did you had getting hurt that early into training camp. It was tough. I, I knew what it was, so I knew how much time and how much effort I need I needed to put in it to get it back to where it needed to be. And uh, now that it's done, obviously I have to stay on top of it because it's uh, it's one of those that like you gotta you gotta maintain throughout the whole season to make sure it doesn't come back. But uh, no, now that I can go forward and and think about football a little more and be be part of not part of the team because I, I've 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 been part of the team but like uh, to be able to uh, to bring something to this team more like physically and probably mentally at the same time yeah. and now this game coming up against the Red Blacks is there potentially going to be some family maybe there if, if you are 
starting or playing for that matter. I'm not sure if that's the case, but if there is. Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, there's going to be my mom, my wife, and, and kids. Uh, they're all very excited, especially my little boy. Uh, he's been talking to me about going back to the Ticats ever since uh, the off season started. So he's going to be uh, pretty excited. He he probably won't be able to wait till we get to the field after the game to just run around. That was Sean Thomas Erlington, and you know he's a guy Ticats fans are ready to see back on the field. I sat down with Ticats strength and conditioning coach Marcellus Bowman to go over his role on the team and to get a deeper dive in what goes on in the Ticats training regiment. I'm joined now by the strength and conditioning coach for the Hamilton Ticats, Marcellus Bowman. Marcellus, thanks for joining me today. Just uh, wanted to get you on here to get a different aspect, something the fans might not see, and that's this you know, this whole other side of the training that goes into getting ready for these games. Yeah. So we're going to start with you, your football journey and how you came to the CFL and how you got this position. So you were a football player. You played at Boston College, wasn't correct. it? So, correct. So, you, so you're at BC, yep. and then you – at what point did you say, okay, let's try out the CFL for myself? Oh, so it was actually when I got cut from the Broncos because I signed with the Broncos uh, out of college, uh, got cut there, and then my agent said, hey, some team up in Winnipeg and the CFL, uh, you know, it was interesting in your tape, should I send them more? I said, sure, go ahead. It was my first time ever getting cut, so I was happy to get any, any interest from anywhere. And the only thing I knew about the, CF, or the CFL was, um, was Doug Flutie because he's from yeah. Boston College, yeah. and he would come back and talk about it a little bit. So I uh, went up there, uh, had three years with Winnipeg, enjoyed myself there, and then came over here. Uh, for two years, and that's, of course, when I met O. Yeah, so you meet Coach O, and, and obviously you meet him as a player, and yeah. then at, at what point after your career did, did Coach reach out to you and say, hey, do you, is this something you want to do, or, or was there a conversation before? Well, you know, so I was, um, after I was done here, uh, I was training um, other athletes and non-athletes, and I got into collegiate coaching, saw so coach at Auburn, then I went down to UCF, and I think it was Zimmerman that came down to UCF to scout one of the running backs there and a few of the other players, and we ran into each other. And we just, you know, caught up real quick. He gave me his car and everything like that. And I think that's what kind of planted the seed so that when a spot was opened up here, um, Coach, I guess I was on the list, and he, uh, he hit me up. Uh, and as soon as I saw his name pop up, a little <laughs> fist pump, I was like, perfect, beautiful. Because uh, if there's any guy we'll come back up for, it's Coach O. Is that always something that was, like, important to you, like that, that aspect of training and, and just being, you know, physically fit or getting other guys to be physically fit? Like, that's just always kind of just been something you've been into is that process? Since day one, I have vivid memories of being in high school and, and locking up with another player from another school. And if I felt he was stronger than me, I would run to the sideline thinking about, okay, what, what could I have done different in the off, mm-hmm. off season? To, uh, to not feel weak. I hated not feeling like I was physically superior. And I was closely, I had a close relationship with the weight room because I feel like that's one of the reasons why I was able to ascend as an athlete. So I always saw it as an opportunity to get better and something that I could, I could control. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely something that, that's always been a major part uh, of me and, and why I, I love to do that and hopefully show that for the other players. And and so with every player, obviously they're every position group, there are different body types, there's yeah. different ways you're probably working with guys. How do you kind of decipher how you're going to plan or what your plan will be with a certain player or a certain positional player? Well, the thing is um, – each part of the season, there's a different philosophy. So in the off season, of course, you're building the player. You're trying to go towards greater performance, right? Mm-hmm. In season, it's a different kind of energy, different vibe, different focus. The biggest thing is availability. Mm-hmm. So the goal is always, what do I need to do for this player to keep them as available as possible? Uh, and that's where the, 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 I guess, the, the hard decisions are made. Um, because I'll start with a, a – Workout that I'll have a lower body workout, upper body workout, then kind of like an accessory workout. And um, basically off of that, there's enough flexibility within each workout to adjust for a player. So, for example, if I have squat for one player, another player may need a safety bar squat. Another player may need a single leg squat. Another player may need a single leg hip thrust. But the goal is still to get some glute activation either way, right? So uh, I try to build the workout in a way to where uh, for those who are feeling good and can handle the ideal workout, they do that. Uh, But for those who can't, you know, there's plenty of, you know, break-offs off of that workout there that will allow them to get better without the negatives that sometimes lifting can uh, can offer now on a football team basically everyone's probably a little bit of a monster in the weight room but mm. but who are some guys that that just surprise you every day just, just whether it be oh. training wise or strength wise you know what it's um so one is of course dylan win mm-hmm. you know unfortunately he's you know been down battling his uh you know knee injury and coming back from that but you know he's a beast in every sense of the word but <laughs> uh he's one uh nick cross okay nick cross pound for pound is a very very strong man 
Um, and he's, you can see it on the field. He's, tri- he's, tw- he's twitchy. Uh, another guy that's pretty impressive, who else? Uh, Kyle Saxley, he works really hard. He's a hard worker. Yeah. Um, a lot of the old linemen, they, they love the gym. If, anyone's, if any group is the most consistent, it's the old line. I'll yeah. say that. Um, who else? You know, in season, it's one of those things where performance-wise, a lot of guys don't do anything crazy in season yeah. just because it's, it's, the return on investment is not high enough because you're risking injury. So guys don't try to do anything too crazy in season. It's really the offseason where all the crazy numbers are, are happening. Now, when a player is like, let's talk about offseason quick. Now, if a player yeah. wants to, say, gain 20 pounds of muscle or, or yeah. whatever that may be, yeah. do you, are you setting them up with, like, a regimen or, or getting them prepared or, or talking them to them throughout the summer just to give oh, them tips? 100%. And I always start nutritionally. Uh, that's Well, actually, I start with the why. Yeah. Why do you want to gain that weight? Because I've been around a lot of players who wanted to gain weight for numerous reasons. That's what I weighed in college. That's when I weighed without the NFL, so on and so forth. And, you know, what you weighed when you were 23 and now you're 28 uh, might not be the same, you know, uh, necessity. So um, first is the why. Second, we have a nutritional conversation. I find out what they're doing now, and then I try to improve on what they're doing now because nutrition is a is a difficult thing for many players to maintain. Yeah. Um, and then after that, then we get to the uh, workout side because the workout side is pretty simple, right? For when, it, when it comes to gaining muscle, it's pain tolerance. Yeah. If you can handle pain, you can put on muscle, <laughs> right? But it's <laughs> yeah. the nutrition side that's really difficult to kind of hone in. So that's what I spend most of my time uh, when it comes to uh, weight gain, guys. So there's a lot of focus on a little bit of everything, like the diet, the nutrition aspect. Yeah. Like that, is the nutrition basically just as big as, as hitting the weights? 100%. Because here's the thing about football and strength training in general, is that both of those break down the body. Mm-hmm. And we've mastered breaking down the body, right, both in football and different techniques and just the violence of the game, the way it's designed. And, of course, just the nature of, you know, lifting weights, you are breaking the muscle and the muscle heals back larger and stronger, right? So we've mastered that side. What a lot of players haven't mastered is putting their body back together, the yeah. corrective exercise, the mobility, and especially the nutrition side. So I put a major emphasis on supplements and nutrition uh, because the athlete that can recover the fastest will dominate the one that doesn't, mm-hmm. right? So uh, that's a major, major emphasis for me and one of the things I'm really trying to communicate to the team. Now, we have a couple of players coming back from injury, and, and obviously it's never being it, it's never easy being injured, and it's always yeah. a process, right? So yeah. we have a couple of players here early, and, and Bo and guys like that who are coming back from an injury. Yeah. Now, when the injury occurs, um, yeah. and, and I'm not asking you to get into specifics with any player here, of but course. when an injury occurs with a player, um, is there a plan of attack kind of where you look at the injury and you go, okay, like this is how we're going to slowly ease this player back into getting yeah. back to playing form? 100%. It's always collaborative ef- effort uh, between um, – player and the athletic trainers uh, of course the athlete and myself uh, so first we we do it as a team uh second is at least from my perspective i want to know what exactly is the tissue that's injured mm-hmm. don't tell me it's a knee injury i don't i don't care if it's an ankle what part of the ankle what part of the knee like exactly. what are we dealing with once i know what the tissue is then we can build whatever program we want uh so for me the process is always okay find out what exactly is wrong what was the event? What exactly happened? Uh, and of course, what the doctors say, what the imaging says. And then once I get that, um, I try to get a projection about how far out the recovery is expected to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I base the program based off of that, right? Yeah. Uh, and of course, the first initial stages are pretty tough because typically it's a lot of swelling and so on and so forth. But once we get past that from a lifting perspective, uh, we start with trying to get you know normal movement first and then try to get more athletic movement second and then put strength on it third. So, so, yeah, so it's quite like you're right to the specific. You're making yeah. sure it's, it's a lot more than just, okay, let's just uh, fix this knee injury quick. Like you're getting yeah. right to the muscle. Yeah, exactly. Now, I'm gonna, for someone like, say, me okay. or, or, or someone at home who maybe is trying to lose weight or, or, or isn't a pro athlete, yeah. Um, yeah. what advice would you give them to, to maintaining or, or losing or being able to, to maintain a healthy lifestyle and maybe lose a few pounds? Uh, well, the first thing is um, – one, of course, is movement, right? So uh, what typically most people think when they're trying to lose weight is I got to do this type of exercise or that type of exercise. Honestly, if you lift, say, three times a week uh, to four times a week, you've checked that box. Mm-hmm. Uh, the biggest thing you can do to lose weight is the amount of steps you take outside of training. Yeah. Right? Okay. Because, say, for example, the average person can burn about 300 calories in a pretty decent workout, maybe 400 if they're a larger person, right? That's a bag of chips. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, true, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, know, that's so, not, yeah. So the amount of effort you put in training and then yeah. how easy it is to throw it away. Mm -hmm. But you can also burn 900 to 1,000 calories by having just an active lifestyle, just walking around, going true. shopping, gardening, things like that. So uh, that's one thing I will always encourage my clients outside of football mm -hmm. uh, to do is to make sure, one, okay, we got the workout plan. We have that set already. But how much are you moving outside of here? Get a step tracker, a Fitbit, a Garmin, whatever the case is. Track your steps. Okay, we need to hit this many thousands of steps a day. And that does a lot of good. And, of course, a really the really big portion of course the nutrition side nutrition side right yeah so that that question may or may not have been for me but yeah, <laughs> but, but no, yeah i'm always happy yeah I, I really appreciate you joining me today it's yeah. really cool to just see this side of the game and, yeah. and it just you know not something we don't normally talk about but it's such a yeah. big aspect of no football doubt. so thanks so much no for joining me my pleasure. my pleasure big thanks to marcellus bowman sean thomas erlington and coach o for being on today's show on tomorrow's show i will be speaking with brian simmons to tee up the red blacks matchup this friday in ottawa that's all the time for me today Thank you for listening to Ticats today.